Hey everybody. Today we're talking about bias and variability in statistics. Big picture, the goal of statistical inference is to use sample data to draw conclusions about populations. In particular, we often use a statistic, a number describing a sample, to estimate the corresponding parameter, that is, a number describing a population. Here's a good example to keep in mind. In a survey of 1,200 voters, candidate A led candidate B by 8 percentage points. We should view that as a sample. The pollster estimated that candidate A would win the election by 8 points. So here the population is going to be the actual outcome of the election. The first 8 from the 1,200 voters is a statistic, and the second 8, the actual outcome of the election, is going to be a parameter. Now sometimes our statistic ends up being exactly the same as the parameter. More frequently though, they differ by a little bit. For instance, the actual outcome of the election could be that candidate A wins by 7.8 percentage points. And in that case, no one would be particularly surprised or inclined to blame the pollster for messing up. However, the statistic could even be far away from the parameter, just through random chance. For instance, perhaps the pollster just happened to to call um, a lot of voters that favor candidate A, just through random chance and no fault of their own. However, we've got a problem here. If the statistic isn't always going to be the same as the parameter, and if we don't really expect the statistic to always be the same as the parameter, how can we tell a good statistic from a bad one? To say it differently, how can we tell if the pollster is really doing their job right or not? This leads us to the concept of bias. A statistic p hat is said to be unbiased if it's equal to the corresponding parameter p on average. So any one result could be high or low, maybe even very high or very low, but neither direction is particularly favored. If the study is done repeatedly, the average value of the outcomes of all those p hats will just be the parameter p. A biased statistic is just one that's not unbiased. It tends to systematically either overestimate or underestimate the parameter. A word of warning here, we're using the word bias in a technical sense here. It's typically not referring to prejudice or discrimination, although that, those can be causes of bias, of course. To say it differently, right here we're concerned with the bias of the statistic, not of the researcher. Here are a few common sources of bias in surveys. Sampling bias. Often, not all members of the population are equally likely to be selected in a random sample. For instance, if we do a telephone poll that doesn't include cell phones, we're more likely to contact um, older people than younger people. And the views of the people that we contact might end up being different on average than the views of the population overall. Non-response bias. Those that refuse to participate in a survey may be different in relevant ways from those that do not refuse. In the pollster example, perhaps um, the voters that prefer candidate B simply don't like taking polls. Asymmetric questions or other non-neutral language can incline respondents to answer in a certain way. Social desirability bias. Respondents are less likely to give answers that are viewed as socially unacceptable, particularly when their anonymity isn't guaranteed or when they're asked by a live interviewer. For instance, if we were to ask people how many times they brushed their teeth in the previous 24 hours, we'd likely get a biased result. The results are likely to be higher than the actual number, than the actual average. A few common sources of bias in experiments. Lack of control. If the experimental groups differ in relevant ways beyond just the treatments being applied, the results of the experiment could be biased. Lack of blinding. Neither the experimenter nor the subject should know which experimental groups receive which treatment. Lack of randomization. Assigning treatment groups without using random assignment can lead to non-uniformity, lack of control, and bias. Even an unbiased statistic is unlikely to agree with its parameter exactly. And the poll is a good example. The pollster predicted an 8-point margin, but the actual margin ended up being 7.8 points. So variability refers to the tendency of a statistic to take different values just due to random chance. So as we said, every different random sample is likely to give you a different statistic, 
even if the sampling method overall is unbiased. Please bear in mind, variability is not a form of bias. Just because the results of that poll didn't end up exactly predicting the results of the election does not mean it was a bad poll. Here's a good picture to keep in mind that illustrates the difference between bias and variability. Um, I'm attempting to draw a bullseye here, and I'm imagining throwing darts at that bullseye. If my dart throws have low variability and low bias, then my results are going to be tightly clustered around the bullseye. Below that, I have low variability but high bias. I'm systematically missing the target, um, but I'm doing it in a, in, a very, in a way that has very low variability. My darts are all still very tightly clustered. On the right, we see two situations where we have high variability. On the upper right, high variability but low bias, my darts are centered around the bullseye, but they're very spread out. The lower right shows the worst case scenario. My darts are both very spread out, and the center of them is not at the bullseye. Do note, however, even in that worst case scenario, high variability, high bias, I still hit the bullseye once. So even the worst kind of study can be correct if the high bias and the high variability end up balancing out one another.